Hello, welcome to an introduction on loops. We're going to need this for the water bottle rocket code. It's quite complicated and it has a lot of loops. So I thought the best place to introduce this was assignment one. I sneakily left in a repeated task in assignment one on purpose. If you remember, you had to do a trajectory a bit like a water bottle rocket for lots of different angles, theta. Remember this? Yeah, of course you do. So if you remember, you had to write the same code over and over again. It's quite dull. You had to write theta one equals an angle, and then you calculated these um, coefficients here from a formula that got you the total distance it traveled. Then you calculated um, what's called a mesh for all the different X points of that, dis um, that trajectory. And then you got the Y's, and then you do the same thing again for X2, and the same thing again for X3. Do you need to write out the same code over and over? Maybe there's an easier way to do this, and there is, it's called loops. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to make the codes look identical. I wanna show how identical they are. At the moment, there's some differences. There's theta one here, there's D one, we're over here, there's theta two, D two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename theta one to just theta. Then everything below here, theta will this this variable will equal theta one. Okay, so if I put replace this theta one with theta, it's going to be the same thing. So just assign theta to theta one. Don't need to call this d. You could call it d one. And if MATLAB has never seen d before, it's going to assume that d is a vector and that this is the, going to be the new first position of that vector. So um, for the x, um, I guess we can just leave as x is now, just x. Here we'll put d1. And this theta will be, this theta one will be theta, this theta one will be theta, this will just be y, this will just be x, this will just be x. So if we run this, it will give the same output for y and x. But now, how different is this code? How, what would change in this code if I wanted to do theta two? So below is theta two, but with the theta twos everywhere. So I'm just gonna replace this. I should say the code for theta two. With the same code we just wrote, but he, I don't wanna delete the theta two bit. But now, I'm going to make a small adjustment. I'm gonna make theta equal theta two. Now the code should all be the same, but maybe now that D is a vector, I could have D two. I could store D two here. Okay. And this will then output the X and Y. But what if, but this will now overwrite. So when I write this line here, this will overwrite the value we gave for X previously. So we will, we will lose that value, it will be, it'll be gone forever, in the void, in the nothing, never to return. So we may want to save this value too. So how would we save this? Um, we could create a matrix where each column is one of these values here. Or we could create an array of vectors. I actually don't know if MATLAB lets you create an array of vectors. I'm going to find out right now. So let's try. If I tell it that this is a, an array of vectors, are you going to get upset, MATLAB? Maybe you will. This is how I code. You, you try things out sometimes, and as long as you plot the result and have a look. So let's see if I can... Um, might be a good idea to plot the result. Let's plot the first... If it, if it did give me a vector, it might just give me an error. I'm not sure. Run script. <laughs> no thank you, said MATLAB. Some programming languages allow that. So I've got a backup. <coughs> I thought this might happen. So to save the values of X, I, it doesn't let me create an array of arrays. I'm sorry, this is, I'm sounding a bit confusing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a matrix instead. Let me just remove this code for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-allocate a matrix of zeros. 
I'm going to tell MATLAB I, I want this just one matrix full of zeros, and I'm going to use this matrix to store the values of the x1 trajectory in the first column, the theta, the the second trajectory of x in the second column. That's the one for theta two and the third one for theta in theta three in the third column, and I'm also going to store the values for um, the y's. And now I'm going to paste the code we just wrote. So here I need to make a small adjustment. I want to store the values of the first column. So if I put, um, if I, if I first I need to give the right name of the variable, it was x matrix. If I use this, it says all the values going down, that's a column, and this one here, this refers to the first column. If this was two, this would be the second column, so it's the first column. And similarly, for y, for the y matrix, I want the first column of the y matrix to be this, and I need to access the first column of x here. Okay, I need to do the same thing for um, for theta 2. It's quite simple. I can just paste over this code here. And all I need to do is put a 2 here, a 2 here, a 2 here, a 2 here. And now I'm um, just going to plot the values to show you that it's working. Okay, run script. Okay, we got at least one trajectory there, and that's all we plotted. Looks like it's working. You can actually plot each column of this matrix against each column of this one just by removing the brackets. It will just try to plot them all. So we've done two trajectories. We should see two trajectories. I'm going to add um, some labels. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Oh, the X has gone the wrong. Look, the second trajectory has gone through the floor. Something went wrong. I must have copied. Um, yeah, there you go. Two. <laughs> it had to be two everywhere there. And let's add some labels. OK, we could do the same thing for the third trajectory. But what's the point? Why am I writing so much? What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to show you that the code looks identical. When you can make the code look identical, except for a one number. So look, I've changed just one number. The number 2 here, 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 and here. Then we can create a loop to automatically repeat that code over and over while changing just one number. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm bored of writing out this code. I'm going to keep the first one there, and I'm going to write the code for all the thetas, all the thetas together. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a theta vector. So this is a vector that stores all the different values of theta. I don't need these two anymore. And uh, I'm just going to copy in the pre-allocation we had earlier. This just gives zeros to both, to both these matrices. Right. Now, here's where the magic is. I'm going to tell MATLAB to repeat the code below three times. I from 1 to 3. This is a vector with three numbers. It's 1, 2, and 3. It's going to make I first equal 1, and then it's going to execute everything below. So... Uh, then it's going to make i equal 2, and it's going to execute everything below. So we need theta here to equal... In, let's indent. Can we indent this? Yes. It looks nice to indent it. It means uh, give it some space. And you need to write an end here. That tells MATLAB that you want to repeat the code only between the 4 and the end. So first thing we need to do, if you remember, we have to make theta equal um, one of the values in our vector. So we can pick out a value by doing theta vector i. 
So then, every all the code below here, everywhere there's a theta, it's going to replace it with the ith component of this vector. So when i equals 1, which is the first step, it'll use um, 30 times pi over 180. Let's just do a little dis demonstration that we can ask MATLAB to display what's going on. So I want you to display uh, theta. And I think I can ask it to do a string and then a vector. Um, let's have a look what happens. And let's just make sure everything is correct here. So here, this isn't 2, this is going to be i. It'll first be 1, then it'll be 2, then it'll be 3. So you just place i. Okay, exciting time, run. Error using display. Does this work? Otherwise, I have to go to MATLAB documentation. Yes, it does. Okay, look at that. It's printed the values of theta. And it's got all the three trajectories. Okay, I made that look too easy. So um, I want to print the value of theta followed by the value of i. So I know which, no, actually I want to print i first. What it's going to do is going to, it's going to take make i equal 1, and then it's going to execute each line of this code in order. Do, 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 do. When it executes this line, it's saving the value of d1. And when it executes this value, it's saving the value of x for the first trajectory, because everywhere there's an i, there's a 1. And remembering that the theta here is going to be replaced by the first theta, and so on and so forth. Okay, So um, I'm just going to show you that d is a vector with all the values we needed. So run script. Oh, here we go. So i1, and this was the theta, which was for 30, I believe. Then it's printed that there's i is 2, the value of theta for theta 2, i is 3. And in, but after printing those values, it executes all the code it needs to calculate the d's. Look at that, isn't that cool? So d, the first d is around 60, so trajectory for 30 degrees is 60. Yes, it is. The second one is 67. Yes, it is. It's further. And the third one is even shorter. It's 57, and you can see that's all correct. So there you have it. That's how to use a loop for the trajectory question. But um, we could simplify this down just to repeat tasks, any task we want, really. So I'm just going to remove uh, this. So whatever, whatever you want to do, if you want to do more than three, you could do eight, eight values. We could, what could we do? We could, and just, we can do any, any formula you like. Maybe you want to take i to the power of two minus i plus some random number. I think that probably works for a random number. Actually, I'll, I won't do that. Um, it will, and, and this line here saves the value on the right to d so that we can access later outside. And I'll put that out here just to show you, and I'll remove this one. In the water bottle rocket, there's going to be many, the loop's going to go many things. Okay, what's going on here? Whoa. Is that because I didn't put a semicolon on there or something? I. Remember, you can't always trust what it prints out. Here goes. Yeah, it was. I'm missing a semicolon. So I've asked it to print i. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here's the end result of the vector. And that comes from this line here. So this repeats this code over and over. And every time we repeat it, it changes the value of i. Just in case it's not clear this what this 1 to 8 is, this 1 to 8 is a vector that looks like this. 
Okay, um, thanks. The water bottle rocket's gonna use a huge loop that goes over many, many, many values. So we're gonna need to use a loop and a functions. I'll see you back there for that.